Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meet again, and in this tutorial we're looking at the RealFlow plugin for Cinema 4D, and specifically the uh, Noise Field Daemon. So let's just get stuck in. Uh, so I'm going to go RealFlow, Emitter, Circle Emitter. I'm going to take the Emitter and go to the coordinates and just put it on its side. I'm also going to add some more time to the timeline. Um, I'm also going to make sure I'm using my GPU by going to Scene, Solver, Use GP, CUDA GPU, and we're going to make the particles bigger just so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, right, so now we have this. Lovely. So let's uh, add the noise field daemon. So we go to Real Flow, Demons, and Noise Field. Now you can see what's going on straight away. Um, so basically what the noise field does, it, it sort of um, adds random noise to, well, it randomly disturbs particles or objects. Um, it kind of uh, gives the appearance of simulating um, air turbulence, that kind of thing. So in, the, in this scene, there's no other forces. Where you know, this emitter's in space so if i turn off the noise field it's like there's no gravity there's nothing like that it's like a zero g envi environment no other forces and this noise field is um obviously disturbing our particles so let's go to the demon noise field tab with our noise field selected and just go through what each of these things is doing okay so the linked fluid as always it detected that there was already a fluid in the scene and dumped it in here there's only one uh, the effect uh, we've got the choice of force or velocity. Uh, we've covered this in all the other demons, but basically force accelerates the particles and they become faster and faster as long as the force is acting on them. Uh, if you choose velocity, it basically takes the strength and adds it to the speed of the particles. And in this case, our speed is 200 centimeters. So it's kind of like a mixture between those things. I'm going to leave it on force for, for the time being. Okay, so strength. Um, so this is basically, this is, I mean, it's self-explanatory. It's the strength of the um, thing. It's at 100 centimeters at the moment. If I drop this down to zero, nothing happens. If I put this up to 50, we're getting this. And if I reset it to 100, so, you know, it's, it's pretty apparent what that's doing. Actually, I'm going to drop that down to 50 because it's a little bit less mental. Okay, so that's the strength de dealt with. The noise space scale. Okay, so how do I describe this? This is like the frequency of the noise. So if you can imagine that in a 3D world space, there is a noise and it's a 3D noise. And as the um, particles travel through it, the noise determines the particles direction, speed, and some other things. In fact, I can actually demonstrate this. If I just turn off a real flow scene and hide it for a minute, I can demonstrate this with a sphere. So I'm going to create a sphere. Um, I'm just going to go into line mode so I can see what's going on. Let's give it a 150 segments. That'll do. I'll make it a hexahedron. Um, and I'm going to need a displacer. I'm going to drop that under the sphere. We can take our lines off now. And in the Displacer tab, under Shading, I'm just going to put a noise. And I'm going to choose a particular type of noise. OK, so let's choose something a bit more, I don't know, yeah, fire. That'll do. In fact, I might drop this in a uh, subdivision surface as well, just to even things out a little bit. And also bring the um, Displacers height down just so it's a little less rough okay so now you can see what's going on with this if i go to the shade and go into noise we can see our noise so let's put the animation up to one and then play this okay so you can see that we've got some movement on the surface there now if we affect the global scale of this noise um, I can bring it down to 100% at the moment, and if I take it down to maybe 10%, you can see the scale of the noise has been um, brought inwards, and you can see that the pattern of this is now a lot tighter. So let's go down to 1%. 
uh, or even lower actually, 0.05%. Now you can see that we're getting really compact now. The scale of this noise has come down. And if I pause this, you can see that we can see some tiling here now as well. Okay, let's go the other way. We were, we were at 100%, we get this result. What happens if we go to say 500%? Where well, are we getting this? Let's whack up the um, displacement slightly so you can get a better sense of what's going on. So now, if we look at the, the actual noise pattern, we can see that it's uh, at 500%, it's kind of like we're zoomed in. And we can see that this is a lot more, that'd be actually quite good for landscapes and that kind of thing. Um, but you can see that it's a lot bigger now. And that's kind of what's going on with our, uh, our real flow scene. So let's just get rid of all of this and turn our scene back on. Because I think that was just a, that was a good way of visualizing what's going on in this um, noise space scale. So if you can imagine a noise like that, um, but it's uh, sort of persistent through the world in all directions, that gives you a, an idea of what we're talking about. So, but it's kind of backwards, as far as I can tell anyway. So let's, this noise space scale is one at the moment. If I make it zero, we're getting very long, drawn out effects there. And that's because inst instead of sort of like, um, uh, you know, instead of it being like that noise, big or small, this is really a description of the frequency of the noise. So at one, we're getting this kind of thing, right? Um, this kind of action going on. Now, if I put this up to like, say, eight, it kind of kind of levels out, and that's because the frequent. Let's put it to five and see see what we get. So as we can see, we're getting further away. So what I think is going on here is that this is the frequency. So the frequency of the noise, you know, the bigger the number, the higher the frequency. But I think say if we put something like fifty in. We can see now that as it travels along, it doesn't really sort of spread out. And I think it's because the frequency is so high that it kind of gets homogenized, if you like. Right, so if we go back to one, we get this. What if we go the other way? What if we go to, say, point 0.1? Let that start again. Now we're getting these long, drawn-out waves. And it's kind of like what you'd expect if, you zoomed, if we zoomed in on that noise... Um, uh, do you remember the the picture of the noise that we had when we when we kind of zoomed in on it? So that's what's going on here. We're actually seeing those black and white areas being much more prominent, like zoomed in on, and that's why we're getting these long, drawn out tails. So that's what that does. That's what the um, noise space scale does. The noise time scale is basically a description of how that noise moves. Okay, so. Imagine that noise permeating through the entire scene and this is its kind of animation time, if you like. So it's a pattern that gets repeated over time. So if we actually set this to zero, that noise is just consistent now. Imagine that noise throughout the scene and it's just static. So you can see that by putting this to zero and then pressing play, you can see how the particles are moving through the noise and changing, but that's the same for all of these particles. You see that they're taking the same route. It's almost like they're growing. So they're moving around the curve of this noise. Look, there's a nice line there that sort of describes it all. So the noise itself isn't moving. It's just the particles that are moving through this noise. Now, if you, we put the noise time scale up to one, we get a very different picture. And that's because the noise is changing all the time. So with higher noise time scales, it means that the pattern will change faster. But it will also mean that the, its animation cycle will, rep will repeat uh, more quickly. So in shorter cycles, you'll get repetition. So let's whack this up, up to 20. Okay, that was overkill.
But I'm just trying to see if we can see some patterns emerging. Okay, I wonder what will happen if I put this up to 100. Yes, okay, this is a good example. You, can, you start to see some repetition. There's a crest there. There's another one there. So everything in between is kind of like it's its cycle. There's a crest. There's a crest. So it's kind of like a wave. Uh, it's very strange, really. Um, so let's put this on five and see what we get. So it's a lot lower now, but um, but yeah, basically it controls the animation of the noise, if you like, um, or it's uh, the frequency in which it repeats a cycle. So that's what that is. Okay, this bounded box, uh, we've seen this in other um, demons, and it just means the force is bounded within a certain area. So if we tick this on, we can now see that we've got this red shape here in the scene. I'm just gonna drag that out. So you can see that nothing's going on with the particles anymore, and it's because it has to be within this bounding area for the force to have an effect. So if we go to the object tab, I can actually choose how big this area is. Let's make it 800 by 800 in all directions. And now when I drag this into our particles, you can see that now the force is actually working. And that's pretty much it, guys. I hope that wasn't too convoluted of an explanation, but um, it's good to understand exactly what's going on. I think that's what's going on. But, uh, yeah, I hope you found that helpful. Um, if you want to follow me on social media, you can do. Facebook, Twitter. Uh, you'll find me under at Digital Meet. Uh, also, the Patreon, if you have found this video helpful in any way or any other of my tutorials, please consider checking out my Patreon page. There will be a link on screen uh, for the outro. And uh, I'll see you next time, guys. Bye!